Hey everybody, I'm Rob Fletcher. I'm the director of training from Team Bonding and uh, it's one o'clock uh, East Coast time and we start on time. That's part of the deal with, with virtual meetings and webinars, something helpful to remember. So I'm the director of training for Team Bonding and I also off and on have been working from home for about 20 years or so. So I don't know if I'm an expert, but I definitely have a lot of uh, experience and a lot of opinions and a lot of tips that I'd like to share with you. So we've got a lot of information. We're going to move fast, move through it. It's going to be different than in our normal virtual trainings. Our normal virtual trainings take some time, interactive, get to know each other, learn more from each other. But this is just a bit more of giving you lots and lots of ideas and hoping that you can find the ideas that are going to be most helpful for you. And also for you to know that there's about 500 people signed up for this. So you are part of a community that you're not alone. There are all these other people out there that are in the same boat as you. So let's get started. What we're going to do is look at the challenges first of working from home. And this is not a Google image. This is my teammate Margaret's cat named Kitty and not posed, just stuck up there. This is part of the challenge. It, there are no boundaries. You're home, you're working. It almost sounds like an oxymoron. At home, work, which is it? It's both and you've got to find a way to navigate it. So one of the first challenges to think of is social isolation. Uh, I, one of my coaching clients said recently, I feel like I'm in a bubble uh, all by myself. And so we're going to talk about ways to, uh, to help you with that. Also porous boundaries. It's a lot clearer when you're at work. Home is not part of that. And those boundaries are gone. Distractions, seemingly endless with families and home, especially now with so many families, everybody's all cooped up in the same place. And copy and paste, what that means is that sometimes people just try to take their work life and put it into home life. And there are unique challenges and unique opportunities, and it's not going to be the same. So also looking at work-life balance, family, inefficiencies when you're talking with your team, you'll notice that everything takes longer. You have to wait longer for the other person to get back to you. Meetings take longer to figure out the tech at the beginning. You're gonna have less things that you can get done in meetings and when you're communicating with each other. And this is a, something that I think people don't think of enough about, that there are no gaps. Usually when you have a commute, you have a gap there and you have a physical gap between home and work. Those gaps are gone now. There's a steep learning curve. Everybody is trying to figure out how to use Zoom. Everybody's trying to use all the technology, figure it out as fast as they humanly can. And it's not easy. The other side of it are, are there are, are opportunities. And one of those opportunities is the same picture, work and cats. That's amazing. It's not work or cats, it's work and cats. And that means you have some more freedom. You have a lot more freedom at home to figure out your schedule, to decide what is gonna work for you, what you would you would like autonomy there is a lot less people looking over your shoulder now boundaries you get to set the boundaries and we'll talk a little bit about that there are actually less distractions in many ways how many people uh, when they were regularly going to work showed up early stayed late so that they could have a no distraction time because all these other things other people were on the phone coworkers, etc and no commute this is actually the statistically most dangerous thing that you do every day is drive a car focus you can have an un unparalleled opportunity for focus you can be more efficient you can follow your rhythm more you can have an opportunity to really really look at work-life balance and you have an opportunity to get some deep work done deep work means the stuff that matters the stuff that counts you have choice points and choice points really mean you get to decide. 
at work, a lot less things are decided by you. At home, you get more, more chance to decide. And that initial steep learning curve is an investment and it keeps paying. You also have an opportunity for closer family connections. You have so much more time with your family now. And you get to lead your team in a new way, whether you are quote unquote the leader or not. And so what I'd like you to remember is that these are all tips and not rules. And so what I like to do is think about this, is to try an idea out, see if it works for you, learn from it, try the opposite of the idea, and then you learn. Now you know what's gonna work for you. So let's dive right into some help. This is how to set up your home office. And we're gonna look at location first. Where do you set up at home? Ideally, all of these are ideal and everybody's got all of their own situation. You may be in a one bedroom apartment with two kids, a dog and your partner. So you may not have a dedicated space, but if at all possible, figure out a dedicated space where you can close the door and leave your work out if necessary overnight. Make sure if you can, again, ideally, not where you sleep, relax, or eat. Keep those boundaries up. Try to make it uncluttered with other non-work stuff. So no piles of laundry in that same room, for example. Has a view. Right now I'm looking out at about six inches of snow on the Western Massachusetts and uh, six inches of snow in woods as far as I can see. And that's my home office view. So. Is there a view, even if it's a picture you put up? And then move your office around the house until you find the right spot. And finding the right spot may be different in the morning, may be different in the afternoon. A new setting often brings new energy. And then it's a little chilly out here in the Northeast right now, but working outside, it's an amazing thing to be able to do. In the summer, I work on uh, my home patio until the sun hits it straight on and I can't see the screen anymore. And then I move to the back patio. Now the next part is hardware tech, if you will. So think about your desk. What can you do about your desk? Do you like stand-up desk? You can either do it DIY. I have a fit desk that I'll get on sometime. I can't do everything on it, but I can do some things on it. Make sure your chair is adjustable. And then laptop. I've read a lot about this and everyone's like, no, don't use your laptop. You're asking for trouble. You can't see, can't see it as well. You won't get as much done. And then you're asking for physical problems. And for me, I've been using a laptop for close to 20 years and that's it. And so that's working for me. So it's helpful for you to think about both those ways. If you do use a laptop, do you want to connect it to a keyboard or a mouse or a monitor? And, or if you use it, use it on your lap and not a table and take breaks, so help your arms out. Monitor, make it large, make the best quality you can, flexible monitor arms, and second screen, productivity goes up 20 to 30% if you get a second screen. And then keyboard, and then audio visual, and this next one is gonna be key for you, is a noise canceling headset, unless you are alone at your home. If you have any other beings, any other humans, any other animals, you're gonna need a noise canceling headset especially if there's not a door that you can close to uh to signal your family that you're on an on a call that can't you can't be disturbed but also to drown out the noise a usb microphone helps although microphones and computers are pretty good these days tech get the fastest broadband you can get especially if you're going to be doing a lot of video test and retest your tech before any virtual interaction you're going to notice anytime you get on a meeting the first five to 10 to 15 minutes uh, are potentially unpleasant because people haven't tested their tech. And get to know it is not going anywhere. Coronavirus is going to go away at one point, but this technology is here to stay. More and more, before this happened, over 50% over of people work at home at least some point in the week. Over 50%, that number is gonna go up. You're going, so a lot of the people out there that are working right now from home are noticing a lot of the opportunities there and are going to want to keep taking advantage of that. Here's a bonus. Connect your laptop to your big screen TV for meetings. Just a little bonus for you. Now let's go on to productivity. So here's some productivity ideas. 
focus on results, not tasks. So tear up your to-do lists and write results at the top of your sheet. And what are the results you want for your day? What's the results you want for the week? Focus means getting rid of distractions. And we're going to get deeper into distractions in a couple minutes. And it's also helpful to remember that you have a unique rhythm. What this means is that most people, without thinking about this, is every minute is created equal. You have the same amount of energy if you, you, you think you have the same amount of energy. But what we do actually have are peaks and valleys. We have highs and lows. And there is a certain point in your day where it's a peak and certain point of your day where it's a valley. What you're gonna wanna do for your, to get peak productivity is find your rhythm and put the most important stuff in the peaks. And so for me, it is not crazy early morning. It's not like 4 a.m., but 8 a.m. on, my, that's, my, that's my peak. Early afternoon, it's my valley. And that is not universal, but it is pretty common. Uh, there is a universal need, almost a universal need for a nap in the afternoon or a desire for the nap. So match your peak energy time with your deep work. Now let's look at your work schedule. Keep it as steady as you can. And what that means is focus on some kind of routine that you don't have to be consciously thinking about, okay, when am I starting today? When am I ending today? What's happening? What's happening today? It's just like, this is what we're doing. I'm gonna keep it as steady as I possibly can. And the other side is it's gonna change. It is always going to change. You've got family, you've got schedules, you've got shifting realities, babies, sick pets. I have a sick cat right now and my schedule this week is gone. So that's at home, but then be flexible based on your teammates, on your team, on their work schedules, their time zones. If you're interacting with people in England, your work schedule is gonna to have to be a little more flexible with that. If you're working with folks in San Francisco, it's gonna to have to be all with that as well. And then also play with your freedom. Find a way to, to find your segment that's gonna work for you. Maybe start early. If you're an early morning person, start later if you are a later person. That's your schedule. What about your family? What about, what can you do if you are right now, like so many people that I've been talking to, everybody's cooped up and it is kind of, a, it's been a pretty tough week last week and, uh, and this week and in Massachusetts, things are even, th more things are getting closed. So it's gonna get even harder. So what does that mean? What do we do? First is you gotta talk it out. You gotta get together, whether it's you and your partner or you and the whole family, figure out how can we accommodate everybody? How can we juggle all of this stuff that's going on? If you don't talk about it, you're gonna make assumptions and you're not gonna be happy with each other. And then you make a schedule. And it's not just your work schedule, it's the whole family schedule. What's happening, when, when, when's the school time, when's the technology time, technology not allowed time, when's the we're going to get eat, we're going to eat, and so on and so forth. Here are some things to incorporate can think about these things. These are simple. Who's involved? Who in the family needs to know about this and, and who of them need to be on the schedule? What are they doing? Where are they gonna do it in the house or outside the house? When are they need to be doing it? And then some rules. So that's more schedule. And then the rest of these is rules. What are we doing for do's and don'ts? What's, this is okay to do now. This is not okay to do now. Food, how, when are we gonna eat? Are we eating together? Are we eating on our own? Who's cleaning up? Who gets private areas? Do we all have private areas? How do we denote the common areas and meet up in there? And then be aware of this is the space we have. What are we going to do with it? And this is the noise we're making. And sometime there needs to be noise and sometime there needs to be quiet. Here are some advice for you to take breaks. Because one thing I've noticed both at work and from people working from home, is it is super hard to take breaks. This next technique has been the single most helpful productivity tool I've incorporated. I've been doing this for about five years. This is the Pomodoro technique, 
and it's named after the little Italian tomato. And there are uh, timers that look like that Italian tomato. And I do not use one of those. I just use my iPhone, put it on for 30 minutes, and then I turn it on. So what we are looking for is ways to put gaps into your day, into your working day to be more productive. If you just sit and try to go, it is a line going down from high productivity, decreasing, decreasing, decreasing to nothing. What you're looking for are peaks and valleys of output of energy. Sprint, then stop. Once that timer goes off for 30 minutes, get up and turn it off. The only way to get up and turn it off is if you put the timer out of arm's reach. If you do put it within arm's reach, you're without thinking, turn it off, and two hours later, you're wondering why you're being so unproductive. And then when you're up, move, move your body. Focus on recharging with fun and using energy. So that's productivity and scheduling. Let's move on to thinking about boundaries and setting limits. The research shows that people that work from home work more hours than people that work in an office. And this is going to continue unless you put some boundaries and you set some limits. And you, if you try to be as available as you are at work and be available to your kids, to your partner, at the same time, nothing's gonna get done. So you have to set up some limits. Let's talk about the phone and the computer first. So first would be, especially during your deep work time and your peak energy time, that's the place to start building it out from there. Then once you've incorporated some limits and boundaries in there, then you can move it out to the rest of your day, but start in that deep work time, that peak energy time. Try taking your turning off notifications on your phone, close your email on the computer during this deep work time, Wi-Fi off on the computer. I do my best work, peak energy time, focusing on something that's important, one single deep work thing, the email is closed on the computer until noon and my Wi-Fi is off. Not everybody can do that, but even if you can do it for five minutes, you're gonna get better work done. And that's what you're doing. You're not doing the time, you're doing the work. And then on your phone, try airplane mode on the phone or do not disturb. So do not disturb is just a button you can press on your phone. There is not a button that you can press on your home. So what do you do how do you get other people to know in your home your kids your partner how do you get them to know that this is a little bit of a do not disturb time next so give them a clear signal close the door if possible or if your headphones are on your noise canceling headphones are on they know or even you can put a literal do not disturb sign up in some way that you need to give them a signal so that they know clearly what's going on. And then check, try that family calendar, family schedule, put do not disturb blocks on there so that your partner knows, hey, I'm gonna take care of this emergency right now. And then your partner knows that you will take care of the emergency when he or she is, uh, is on their do not disturb time. I already mentioned that there's more time spent at home working. And if you don't watch it, there are no boundaries. All the boundaries are blown away. So you've got to put them up. A clear one is don't turn it off, don't turn it on until a certain amount of time in the morning. And that's going to depend on your schedule, your family schedule, your work team schedule. If you are a classic person that shows up at work at 9 a.m., fill in the blank with nine and then turn it off all off no later than fill in the blank and leave the room or leave the area so it's turned off you can't check it anymore that night and spend that time with your family they need you hours worked back work in a day hack it back to eight try to find a way to get it back to eight and take breaks take lunches away from your work area and the ideal is if you have family in the house, 
take it with your family, spend some time with them. This is a rare opportunity. This is an opportunity moment, if you will. And then news and social media. There is so much fear right now, so much uncertainty. And the news is not about trying to make you feel better. The news is about your attention and your eyeballs. So fear is not gonna go away by watching the news. So, so here are some things to think of, is curate your incoming. You decide, it's a fire hose if you don't decide. You decide, you be the gatekeeper. And limit it, especially at night, so you get a good night's sleep. Your family needs your sleep, you to be have it well rested. Your work needs you to be well rested. And then try a five minute per day limit on news. And that's a bold idea for some. For some people, like no problem. Notice if you feel happier and more energized after news and social media. If you do, that's great. You're on the right track. If you do not feel happier and more energized or more informed in a positive way where you feel like the situation is more under control inside you, if you don't feel that, then you need to dial it back. Remove temptations from your zone. So junk food, unhealthy snacks, this is a choice point with you being at home. Are you going to eat better than you do at the office or are you going to eat worse? This is one of your choices. Look out for housework. Again, out of sight, out of mind. Remove the television, put a, a blanket over the TV, something like that, and close the door and put away the work papers at the end of the day. So you'll notice the first three is about the house encroaching on work, and the last one is about work encroaching on house. Now, you have had a commute for much of your work life, and you're working from home now. There was a natural gap for you. Mind the gap is something that they say in the London Tube, and what that means is notice the gap, notice the difference between the platform and getting on the train, and here you need a gap again. If you don't have a commute, you have lost your gap. Your brain is a plane that takes time to descend, land, and taxi. If you try to go immediately from home to work, you're still thinking about home while you're working. And if you try to go immediately from work to home, from work to home, you're still thinking about work. If you're juggling work and home and news and trying to go to sleep, your brain is juggling that while you're trying to sleep. Put gaps between anything that matters and anything that requires brain power for you. And lastly, don't multitask your loved ones. This is an opportunity for you to be there to get stronger connections with your family. Now we've said the number one isolate, number one challenge for most people is that social isolation. Here are just a ton of ideas. I'm just gonna go through them quick. Pick one at least that sparks your interest. Know that video is better than audio in terms of connecting with people. Find ways for coffee breaks. If no one's reaching out to you, you know what to do. You reach out to them. And we use Slack all the time for work. Is there a way that we can use Slack for something else? Can we use Slack for funny, personal moments? Can we ask for help? Can we walk virtually together with somebody, a lunch buddy that we used to do at work? And then when you're getting frustrated with not hearing with someone, What's going on with your coworker? Think about that. Is a baby not licking the, you know, can't stop the baby from licking the floor again? Potentially have open office hours via Zoom. You just turn it on, give people the link, and then you do your work. Somebody shows up, great. If nobody shows up, no problem. Ask your team for help. And then we're gonna talk more in a future, in the next webinar about meetings. But one of the things to think about is personal check-ins. Think about just fun things, anything that is gonna build the team. We are all about team bonding, but there are moments that you can do every day that is informal team bonding until the next time we can all be together again. So songs, jokes, what are their kids up to, their pets? Is there a day, you know, let's get together, let's have lunch together on Zoom. Just hang out and chit chat. Have a beer together, have a cocktail virtually. And then aside from your team, reach out to old family members, old friends that live far away. You may have been focusing more on people, other people, 
now here's your chance to focus on the people that are a little farther away. And then also just remember that we are all connected. All 500 people on this call are connected. We are all in this together. We're all in the same boat. We all want to be happy and we all are trying to not be unhappy. So there are ways that we can support ourselves. Two, seven, two webinars away, we're going to have a whole one de dedicated to resiliency and health and wellness. So this is just a little touch for you. When you feel overwhelmed, when you feel upset and scared and kind of out of control with this world, bring it back to your circle of influence. What can you control? That's the only thing that matters. Just here, just right now. Focus on eating well to support your body and move, especially if you are used to going to a gym or doing something at work. Here's your chance to find some way to move, to get creative, to get outside and sleep. I'll give you lots of sleep tips in two weeks, but for now, aim for eight. Aim for eight hours of sleep. That's what your brain needs. Anything less than that, and it's like you're drinking, like you're getting inebriated. You're losing reflexes, losing, losing ability. And outside, at least an hour outside is the ideal. At least an hour. Five minutes counts, though. And there is nothing like being outside and getting fresh air in your lungs and that larger space for you to notice and be able to see a bigger picture, to not get lost in what's happening and the worries that are happening. And lastly, love and appreciation. Love your family. Give them lots of love. Love your pets. Love your family that is far away. And appreciate the heck out of everybody. Because they need you. And when you appreciate, you get back to the smarter part of your brain. And it helps you be your best for yourself and for everybody else. So that's a little taste of lots and lots and lots of different tips for working from home. So what I would invite you to do to wrap up is to revisit your chosen challenge and opportunity in the beginning. What was the, the challenge? What's your big challenge? What's your big opportunity? And look for any notes you did that you wrote down, pick a tactic for each, and then let somebody know. If you do, if you let somebody know, you're gonna do it. If you don't let anybody know, you're not gonna do it. So let your partner know, let your teammates know, Here's my challenge, here's my opportunity, here's what I'm gonna try out this week, and I'm going to see what happens. I'm gonna play with it. And once I play with it, I'm gonna experiment, I'm gonna learn, and once I've learned, I'm gonna adjust and try it again, and I'm gonna persist. I'm gonna keep going. So the next webinar is next week, same time effective virtual team meetings we're going to focus all on the team so we'll, we'll talk about team meetings formal team meetings and informal team meetings this is one of many 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 different virtual team building and team development offerings that we have if you want to check it out teambonding.com and click on the virtual training workshops so we've got a couple of minutes uh anyone that needs to leave at 1 30 you are welcome to leave but i'm going to take a look at Q&A questions and uh, try to answer any questions that have come up for you. And if no questions come up, that's fine too. And be well, everybody. Okay, great tips, great thanks. What are some ways to engage big workforces who are working remotely and in the office? Thanks, Rose, that's a great question. I would say go through some of the things and think about ways that you all have in common. So for example, there's something you're all working on, something that's focused, that you're focusing on, 
focus on that and then focus on more universal things so health tip that goes out so maybe not joke of the day or something like that but a health tip like eating well a reminder to move reminder to take breaks reminder to get some sleep uh, suggestions for family schedules because we're if it's a big workforce a lot of people are experiencing the same thing maybe find a way to uh, gather some ideas from people where you put out the, the a question of the week about one of those one of the challenges that might be from working from home so any of the, and the challenges from working from home you look through you pick one and send it out and have people answer is this going to be recorded uh, it is recorded and we're going to find a way to get it to you thanks any tips on team conflict resolution in the virtual world? I think what we'll do is I'll spend a little time on that next week. So let's spend some time uh, next week. Thank you for that question. Oh, this is wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, Shannon. Great. You are all so welcome uh, available. Hey, greetings from Germany. That's great. Um, can you explain your audio and video setup? So I am using very, very simple this is my macbook pro i am using the internal microphone right now and i'm using the computer that's in it we're using GoToWebinar, um, which is also part of GoTo meeting for this particular uh this particular region i mainly use zoom so if you are starting figuring out what video conferencing to use just start with zoom because it's going to be the easiest for everybody the lowest bar of entry uh, that's that's my uh, two cents on that. How to best handle different team members' level of response or time to respond to, to questions. Get curious about their situation. Is something going on for them? Is something, what's their home life situation? You won't know unless you, you ask. And, uh, and then you can also gently set expectations and say, I totally understand if you can't get it there yet, but we need to have a conversation about that. So just like the conversation about the family schedule, have a conversation about what you need met, when, and uh, and why. You know, what is are there extenuating circumstances? Are they permanent? Are are they transitory? Can we get a recording of this to share with others? I uh, I believe so, and uh, we'll get back to you on that. Thanks so much, everybody. And uh, I will still stay on for another minute or so if there are any other questions. All right, everybody, have a great week. Good luck, have good breaks, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you next week.